Today's video was inspired by you guys. You guys wanted to see everything, legit, todo el pedo, from the camera raw level to Photoshop. What does my process look like? And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get into Capture 120 and show you my process as to how I start my image at the raw level. Then we're gonna dive into Photoshop and get into the skin retouching and the color grading. Keep in mind that this is an intermediate tutorial, so if you're new to Capture 120 or Photoshop, I already have beginner level videos on those topics and I'll have those linked in the description as well as a raw file so that you can follow along with me throughout this tutorial. Please let me know in the comment section below if you guys want me to include the raw processing in these full edit videos, whether it's in Lightroom, Capture 120, or even in the camera raw level. Now, let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. The first thing I wanna adjust in Capture One is I wanna adjust the dark tones and I'm gonna to go to new filled adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename this to HDR. And I'm gonna lower the contrast a little bit to negative three. And then I love the high dynamic range. Um, I love bringing out the detail back in the image. So what I'm gonna do is in the highlights, I'm gonna bring some of those tones back in the bright areas. I'm gonna bring up the shadows and bring some of that detail back, a little bit of the whites. I'm gonna put it maybe about one. And then the blacks about 10. And I love doing this because with high speed sync, when you shoot high speed syncs, a lot of the times you lose a lot of the detail and it comes out just a little bit contrasty. So I feel like this HDR slider in Capture 120 really helps bring out those tones again. Now I'm gonna focus on the color. So that's usually my first step is recovering some of the tones if I lost any. And then the next thing is the color. So I'm gonna name this white balance and then color. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a color variability trick that I've shown in my other Capture One uh, 20 videos. So I'm gonna bring up the saturation all the way and then I'm going to zoom in. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring this Kelvin number down where I get enough color variability in the image. Now it's gonna be different on image to image, of course. So I'm gonna go maybe 4856, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit the check mark, this is the before and then the after. Now the saturation's a little bit overkill. So I'm gonna bring down that saturation. And of course, I can never get it at 50. Let's leave it at 49, that'll be good. Okay, so this is the before and after. I still feel like it's a little bit too much color. So then I'm also going to bring down the opacity to about 50. And what this does is that it allows the image to kind of get the colors separated just a little bit. Now let me zoom in because I know a lot of people have left me feedback on my YouTube comments saying, hey Eli, I can't see. So I'm zooming in for you guys. And you'll notice it's just a subtle difference. And you know what? I might even bring the opacity back up. Let's bring it to 70. I'm gonna bring it up to 70. So yeah, before and then the after, bringing out those tones, that's looking good. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and add another new filled layer. And I'm gonna name this one uh, Color Balance and maybe Plus uh, Curves, because we're gonna do both of them. So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and scroll down to my Color Balance, there we go. And then in my shadows, what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want maybe, because it's the complementary color. So looking at this image, we obviously have a lot of orange tones. So complementary color would be blue. So I'm gonna add blue into my shadows. So I'm going shadows here. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of blue. Midtones, I'm gonna add a little bit of red. And then highlights, I'll add just a little bit of like a yellowish tone right about there. So I hit this check mark before and after, just a subtle difference. I don't see, I don't know if you guys will be able to tell on the YouTube monitor or your YouTube screens, but I can see the difference on mine, just a subtle difference. I don't wanna push the color grading too much just yet at the raw level. I'm gonna wait until Photoshop. So we already covered that. And now I'm also going to get into the curves and I'm gonna fast forward this part because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the blues in the greens and I'm going to modify them and it's going to take me some time so I'll tell you the numbers after I fast forward it.
all that curves did was just add a little bit of yellow tone. So let me see if I can zoom in here and see if you guys will be able to see this on your screen. Just hit the check mark before and after. And we're gonna get into curves a little bit later in Photoshop. And you'll see like a little subtle difference up here. So if I hit the before and then the after, it just adds that like kind of like nice yellow tones over there. So let's kind of just take a look at the before and after of the whole thing so far. So this is before and then after. Pretty good so far. And then I'm gonna get into the color editor because what I noticed, and I'm gonna go ahead and add another new field layer. And we're gonna do this, uh, let's name it color editor. And what I really wanted to bring out before I got into Photoshop was those orange tones. Uh, this image was very like orange heavy and dominant. So I noticed that the background sky really wasn't as orange as I would want it to be. So we're gonna use the color editor to specifically select that hue, bring up the saturation, and then we're gonna mask it away from the model Betsy because we don't want the orange saturation to come up on the model. So with a color editor layer selected, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna look for do, 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 right here, advanced color editor. I'm gonna click and we're gonna get this orange here. I'm gonna click the view selected color range check mark. And you'll notice that I've selected and it shows me exactly what I have selected because these are the areas that have color. And what I wanna do is I wanna adjust the hue a little bit. So I wanna go like negative 0.7. And then the saturation, this is the one that I really wanna bring up. Okay, and I don't wanna bring it up that much, but I wanna bring it up to maybe like about 19, 18, it's good. And then bring up the lightness as well. So about 2.2. And so let me take that off. And uh, I'm gonna take the view selected, so view selected color range off. And then this is the before and then the after. Now you'll notice that it's also grabbing the skin tone. Now I could adjust it here, but I think it's just gonna be easier because there's a lot of orange tones that are similar here. And what I'm gonna end up doing, this is gonna make it easier. I'm gonna push M on the keyboard. That's gonna give me a mask. I'm gonna push E on the keyboard now to get the eraser. And red basically means that this uh, effect is applied to the entire image. And by pushing E, I got the eraser. And now I'm just erasing that orange adjustment now where I don't want it to be affected. So this is one of my favorite things about Capture One. And once again, I have videos that are at a more beginner level. So if you wanna know more about Capture One 20, go ahead and check those out. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly go through there. There we go. And let's click the before and after. So before and then after, good. And then let's get to the gradient. So I'm gonna drag, right now I notice that there's like a, like a hot spot, not necessarily a hot spot, but the, the light's here obviously, and it's hitting the little uh, bridge and rail here. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna add another new field adjustment. I'm gonna go right here to draw linear gradient and I'm gonna just click and then drag and I want to bring down the exposure. I wanna bring down the brightness in that area to put more attention here. And just to stay organized, let's go ahead and name it uh, Gradient, why not? And there we go. So that's all we're gonna do at the raw level. Now let's go ahead and let's jump into Photoshop. Now let me zoom in one last time before we jump into Photoshop. And let's take a look at the before and the after. Now let's go into Photoshop. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go edit with Photoshop 2020. I'm gonna go as a TIFF, uncompressed, Adobe RGB 1998 and edit variant. And let's rock and roll in Photoshop. Before we get into Photoshop, I do wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Make great use of your downtime and check out Skillshare's online classes, which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. The class I recently enjoyed watching was iPhone Photography, How to Shoot and Edit Conceptual Photos on Your Phone by Emily Zatska. My favorite thing about this class is that if you feel like you're in a creative rut, this class is gonna be perfect because she goes over a step-by-step -step process into what inspires her work from how she composes her images, but also the color choice that leads to her mood boards. And what's also great about this class is that she just uses her smartphone to create her photographs. So this class is perfect for any creative or curious people. 
Now is the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills. For everything Skillshare offers, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Now that we're in Photoshop, let's remove that softbox. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to my cleanup layer. We're gonna play this and we're gonna go a little bit faster in this tutorial because a lot of this stuff is real basic stuff and I spent already nine minutes, I think, already in Capture One and I don't want this video to be too long, but let me know guys in the comments. You know, do you guys mind if these videos are like super long? I don't know. So I am gonna go ahead and now do frequency separation. I'm gonna zoom in and I want to separate the texture from the color. So I'm gonna go about 18. I think 18 is gonna work for this image. So I'm just gonna move around. Everything is looking great so far. I'm gonna hit okay. And step number one, when I do frequency separation, I'm gonna be removing the blemishes with the clone stamp. So I'm gonna be removing any type of blemishes and I'll be fast forwarding this part because this part is pretty basic and using the clone stamp once again. Throughout this process, it's important to remember to select similar texture so that it blends a lot smoother. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move away from the texture layer and go to the color layer and use the mixer brush to smooth out any color in the skin. So I'm gonna to move to my color backup layer. I'm gonna go and select the mixer brush and you can see my settings up here. And now I'm gonna turn on my helper layer, assist layer. I'm gonna take off the contrast one here and I'm gonna change this to multiply. And with this curves, it's gonna allow me to see the tones, the tone transitions a little bit easier. There we go. And as you can see up there, my settings are 40, 35, 35, 40 for the mixer brush. And that's gonna be dependent on if you're using a tablet. So that is what I'm using here. And all I wanna do is just kind of just smooth out some of these transitions and that's all I'm gonna be doing on this step. I'm not gonna do it too much because I'm gonna come in with Dodge and Burn in a moment and we're gonna make some more adjustments. And that pretty much concludes the frequency separation. Just removing the blemishes and just doing a little bit of skin retouching and smoothing out some of the transitions as you can see here. Now it's time to move on to dodge and burn. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my dodge and burn action. And this is where I'm gonna spend a little bit more time smoothing out the transitions. And same thing, I'm gonna change it to multiply. That's the blend mode that I prefer as of late. And I'm gonna raise this up. And I do have a frequency separation and a dedicated dodge and burn tutorial. So those of you that are new to this, I'll have those linked in the description. So I'm gonna to switch to the brush tool. I'm gonna to use my Todo El Pelo brush. And then I have the white and black brush set up. And if you don't know this, Dodge is gonna lighten up the areas. Burn is gonna go ahead and darken up the areas. And I'm using this Dodge and Burn helper layer. You can also call it a visual aid to kind of help me see some of the transitions that I might need to kind of just even out just a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with my dodge. Let me show you a quick example. I'm gonna come in here. And I am just going to lighten up this transition so that we don't get any of these tonal inconsistencies in this specific area. So I'm just doing a quick dodge and burn just as a demonstration. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the rest of the part because I have plenty of videos already. This is, I think this is my 10th already full edit. So if you check those out, I usually have a new tip or trick that I've learned. And then of course I have my own dedicated dodge and burn video. So let me go ahead and let me just dodge that real quick. So let me just show you an example. Let me close that, there we go. And then we got the before and then the after, just like that, right? So that's all I'm basically gonna be doing in this step. If I hold Alt, that shows you where I dodged. 
So basically in this step, that's all I'm gonna be doing. Dodge to lighten up areas, burn to darken up areas, and that's pretty much it. And let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done so far on the face. Just a little bit of adjustments, so you can see there. I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna be adjusting the blend mode, as you've probably seen throughout this um, tutorial. I usually switch it between overlay and multiply. Sometimes I'll leave it at normal. Sometimes I'll even do it with the color on, it just depends. And that pretty much does it for the local dodge and burn. Now we're gonna get into the global, which is really gonna give us that three dimensional pop. I have some dedicated layers for that. So I'm just gonna basically make another dodge and another burn to just separate the two. I'm gonna get my brush tool. This time I'm gonna change it to 4% flow just to make it pop just a little bit more. And what I wanna do is I want to enhance the areas that I think that should be brightened up a little bit and also darkened a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a global check layer. And this I'm gonna bring back right about here. So obviously I'm gonna dodge or burn. Oh my gosh, I said it right. Dodge here, dodge here on the nose and on the cheeks and then here as well. So this is just a reference, just a threshold with a soft light layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna come in here and with just a couple of clicks, just add a little bit of that dodge. I'm gonna come into the nose. In the cheek, or on the top of the cheek I should say, right underneath the eye right there. We can also enhance some of the light on the lips, like right here. So I'm looking for those highlighted areas that already have that pop. So just areas like this. And I can also even out some of these tones as well. So if I just hit the eyeball, you can already see what I'm doing there. Even on the forehead, right? And uh, there were some spots over here on the arm that I can also kind of brighten up just a little bit. I don't want to add too much. Good. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the global burn to darken up areas that I specifically want to add that depth as I mentioned. So let's switch to the burn. And I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and just darken up areas like the shorts here on the shirt, underneath the arm, maybe just a little bit here. I don't want the cheek to be too dark. And I'll maybe just add a little swipe here on the nose. Maybe just a little bit of depth here in the hair. Just like that. And let me come back to the dodge. And I'm gonna brighten up the hair. Obviously I'm brightening up areas that got that light that I used with the strobe. I don't want to be lightening up areas that are dark. 
So just like that, I'm gonna group these real quick just to kind of see what it looks like. Yeah, so that looks nice. And let's look at the overall before and after with that. And that's looking nice, cool beans. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna now do one for the eyes. Okay. And I am going to go ahead and zoom in. And I am going to lighten up the eyes ever so slightly and just like that. And I'm probably gonna add a little bit of light here on that. Just like that. Now what I also notice is the eyes are a little bit dark, so I'm gonna add another curves, but this time I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen, and I'm gonna invert it. So you'll see that when I added it to screen, see how the eyes got a lot brighter? So I'm gonna push Control and then I to invert that mask. And now I just wanna add a little bit of that light into the white of the eyes because they were a little bit too dark for my taste. Just like that. Now, of course, if it's too much, we can just dial it back, which I think it is. So we'll go 45. And then the eyes, that's looking fine. Let me zoom out, let me see how it's looking. Yeah, it looks better when it's zoomed out. And then I will come back and I'll add just a little bit more to the lips. I'll add like a swipe there. And that should pretty much cover the dodge and burn process. Once again, let's take a look at it. And let's take a look at the overall before and after of the frequency separation and with the dodge and burn. So it looks like we're ready to now start the color grading. Now we're gonna get into selective color, color balance for the color grading, and we're even gonna throw in a little bit of curves. So I'm gonna go through selective color, and I'm gonna go into the reds first because we know that that's where the skin tone's at, so we're gonna go negative 10, and then we're gonna go one and then four, and let me zoom in because I know some people had mentioned, and I mentioned this earlier, that people want to see the colors change. And it's kind of hard to see, I think, on the computer screen at home. And yeah, you can see the difference a little bit. So I'll leave it right about here. And then I'm gonna go into the yellows. So typically my first step is to go and adjust the reds and the yellows for the skin tone. Now I'm not gonna push it that much, but basically this is how much I pushed it, just a little bit. Just bring in a little bit of more red tones into the skin tone, so once again before and then the after, just like that. Now I'm gonna add another one. So this, let's be organized here, I'm gonna go skin tone, and then now I'm gonna add another selective color. And I'm gonna zoom out on this one. This one I adjusted the blues, and all I simply did is I went into the science to bring out some of the cyan color back here. I just went to 19, and then I went one, and then negative three on the black. And then I wanted to, it. I wanted the image to be a little bit warmer, so I went into the neutrals. The neutrals is gonna control like the midtones and the overall image. So what I went ahead and did is I went one on the cyan and then one on the yellows. And so that pretty much covered the second layer of selective color. Not much of a change, but just a subtle difference. And then this one is where some of the changes were a little bit more heavy. So I'm gonna go into my color balance. And on this one, I adjusted the shadows. So obviously I'm targeting the shadows here and I wanted to add a little bit more cyans. And then blues, I wanted to add four. And the reason for that, and we talked about this in the beginning when we were in Capture One, is that I wanna add blues because we have a lot of oranges in the image, right? And the complementary color of orange is blue. So I'm gonna complement that with the shadows adding blue. Then I went into my midtones and I went ahead and I went one towards the red and then negative two towards the yellows. And then highlights, negative one and then negative four. Now for this next step, 
What I really wanted to do, and before I get into the next step, actually, let's just take a look at the before and after. It's just a small difference once again. And let me kind of zoom in here so you guys could see this. Okay, so subtle differences with these layers. I don't really try to go for like big changes on each individual layer, just subtle, subtle differences, and we just kind of build it up. And so for the next one, the next layer that we're gonna add is curves. And when we were in Capture One, I saw the sky and I wanted to make it more orange. And now that we're in Photoshop, I want to work with the background sunset. So in order for me to do that, I decided to work with curves on this specific image. Now, of course, you can use selective color if you wanted, but on this one, I did curves. Now curves, I feel like, I don't know what it is. I feel like you get like a cleaner look with curves and you just have to play around with it. Now I saved this preset so I didn't have to redo it, um, but this is what I did. So I'm going to put here Betsy YouTube, okay? Now it added it to the overall image because remember that our mask, and I'm going to name this sunset. Remember that this mask is white, so obviously it's going everywhere. And so what I, what I want to do is I'm just going to make a selection. I'm going to get W, which is my quick selection tool. And I'm just going to do a fast selection of the background. And I'm holding Alt so I can get the negative. There we go. I'm going to push L on the keyboard, right click and I am going to feather and we're going to feather it so we have a nice soft edge. If not, this edge is gonna be very, very sharp and it's gonna have a very edgy look to it. So we're gonna go 30. And then now I'm gonna push select inverse because now I have the area that I don't want to be color grading and I'm gonna go edit fill and we're gonna fill it with black, all right? and hit okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna press control D. Now I apologize if I went too quick there. Basically, I just made a selection of the sky, selected that, and I just added that color grade on the sky. And I could have used the brush and made that a lot easier, but that's just the way I like doing things. So I apologize if that looked complicated, really wasn't. Uh, but anyways, so this is what I ended up doing. So I added this color grade to the background. Now I did like the blues, but I just wanted it to be really orange heavy. So I added that and let's take a look at the properties here. So if I go into the reds, you could see that I added this kind of S curve there, the greens and then the blues added a little bit of a subtle curve just for that background sunset. We have a few more steps to complete on this image. We're going to jump into the camera raw filter next. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my camera raw filter action, which basically merges everything together. And then I can go ahead and use camera raw filter. So I'm gonna double click that. I've already saved the preset that I used on this image. Each image I do adjust differently. I don't use presets. So I'm gonna to go to Betsy Orange YouTube and let's take a look at the settings that I applied on this image. So for the shadows, I brought up to 25. I felt like it was looking a little bit to contrast theme. So I brought it up to 25 and then looking at the blacks, I'm gonna bring them up just a little bit more and I might even bring up the shadows just a little bit more as well. Each time I edit an image, it's always gonna look a little bit different. The vibrancy I brought up to three. The curves we left it the same, but then I did come in here and add a, I did add a little bit of an S curve to each of the curves layers and curves has a lot of potential with the color grading so i highly encourage you guys to play around with those adjustments now let's take a look at the color mixture on the luminance i did bring up the oranges to three and two on the reds and oranges saturation i just brought down the blues and purples a little bit and it didn't adjust anything in the hue slider split toning brought some teals and some reds into my shadows grain I brought to about five and then my camera calibration I brought the blue primary saturation to 10 and this is the key one this one's very important because this can really bring out the colors in the image but you have to be careful because if you push it a little bit too much it gets a little bit crazy and as I'm looking at this image for the second time I might actually bring it up just a little bit more we'll go about to 15 why not so let me see if I can toggle before and after so this is before and the after, not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So the next thing I wanna add is a fade to the background. I noticed when I was editing this image that the blacks were a little bit too contrasty. So I'm gonna run a fade action that I created. So I'm gonna go to fade three, I'm gonna run that action and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and just brush just a little bit to lift up some of these shadowed areas so that they don't appear as contrasty and they appear a little bit faded. And this is what's going to, what it's going to do as well is that it's going to make her pop because she has all of the contrast now. And because this is faded, she's just going to pop now. So if I click the before and after, you'll notice that she's able to pop now from this image. So we got that going. And then I'm also going to throw an exposure layer. I don't do this very often, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add just 10 and it's going to add just a little bit of a fade. So you know what? I can probably add just a little bit more the second time that I do this. Let's do that. Let's go 32. That looks perfect. So look at the, the detail in the shadows here. See how it's nice and fading over here, fading there. So that looks nice. And that's gonna be, of course, up to you. And then the last step is coming in here and adding another curves. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the second one. And on this one, I added it to just the sky. And we already have the sky mask that we had did before. So I'm gonna just hold Alt and I'm gonna drag it up and we're gonna replace it here. I'm gonna put yes. And now, obviously, this is a little bit overkill, so we're going to go ahead and come down with the fill. And we're going to adjust it to wherever we feel looks about right. So I like it around 22. And for the last step, all I'm going to do now is I just want to add just a little bit more lights to make the skin pop a little bit more. So I'm going to come into Levels, and I'm going to go into the white areas and just drag it a little bit to the left. I don't want to drag it too much because then it starts to overexpose areas. So just a little bit right about at 250. It's going to be a subtle difference, but it's going to give it that nice sharpness. And that pretty much concludes it, guys. Now, one of the other things that I decided to exclude from the tutorial because I did the capture one and I was afraid with this video. I didn't want the video to be too long. So what I also did in this image, which I'm not going to show, is I did come in here and I did remove the flyaways and the hair. All I did is I made a new layer. I did the clone stamp and just clone stamped it out. It's very simple. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how to do that. But let's take a look at the before and after of the overall image. I'm going to come all the way down. I'm going to hold Alt. And there we go. Okay, and let's go about medium right about there. So let's go before and the after. And that concludes the video. I hope the video was not too long, but let me know in the comments, do you guys want me to do more full edits where I use Capture One at the raw level and jump into Photoshop? Or should I strictly stay in Photoshop? Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.